Welcome to part three of this series of tutorials on using AI tools. In this tutorial, what you'll do is learn about chatting in AI tools. So you'll find it's called ChatGPT for a reason. Here's what you'll learn. Firstly, we'll look at the value of repeating the same question. Then we'll look at how you can get an AI tool to pause in its answers. And finally, we'll look at how you can create Q&A sessions. But that's enough of looking at me. I'll vanish now. And let's get started. So we'll begin with looking at getting an AI tool like ChatGPT to answer the same question more than once. So what I'm going to do initially is type in the question, what do you think are the five best films of all time? And I want them in a numbered list with the year of release in brackets. So if I run that, I'll get some familiar tropes. Um, Casablanca, number three, excellent choice. And what I could do if I like is to click on this little icon or press the F5 key and just try again. So my order was Citizen Kane, The Godfather, Casablanca, Schindler's Link, List and Pulp Fiction. But when I run it again, I'm hoping it's going to shuffle them slightly. And this time I've got Seven Samurai, for example. The reason that unlikely effect happens is because an AI uses generative AI. And what that means is it works out the most likely way probabilistically of finishing your sentence or answering your question. And because it involves probability, you'll get different answers each time you run it. You can tweak that probability using something called temperature, as we'll see later in this series of tutorials. So that's one way in which you can repeat a question. Another way is to try to improve the answer with a bit of prompting. So this time I'm going to try to get help on what I can watch tonight with a friend who's coming round. So I'm going to ask the question, I have a friend coming round tonight and we're going to order in some pizza and binge watch some box sets. Please can you recommend three things we could watch? And it recommends The Bear, Stranger Things and Only Murders in the Building. Um, yeah, maybe Only Murders in the Building. I got a bit sick of it. So what I'm now going to do is just say, please try again. Now it's likely that it will take account of the fact that it's recommended those three things and give me three or different films or three different box sets. And you can see it says three fresh, fresh recommendations. So I've got three different things. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. If you haven't seen it, watch it, superb. Although I'm not a huge amount of evidence that it works, what you can sometimes do is put a bit of pressure on ChatGPT or whatever AI assistant you're using. So what I'm now going to say is it's really important you come up with good recommendations, as this is a friend I haven't seen for a long time and I really want the evening to go well. Please really try to come up with a good list. So let's see what it does. So it says, thanks for the extra context. That helps a lot. I can't believe it does. And this time it's recommended Ted Lasso and a couple of others. I've seen people claim that applying pressure like this works. I guess what it could do is make the AI tool take longer to give its response and reason better. Maybe worth trying. So as well as repeating questions, you can ask ChatGPT or any other AI tool to pause. So what I'm going to do is say, please show me a list of the 20 best Beatles songs of all time, starting with the one you consider to be the greatest. Please pause after each five songs. So let's see what happens if I run this. It comes up the list of songs, beginning with what I actually think is the greatest Beatles songs, although I realise not everyone will share that opinion. And it says, want me to roll into song six to ten now. So I'm going to say Y for yes. And it comes up the next. And then I presume somewhere down here it's saying ready for the next batch. Yes. And then finally I could get the last batch and then it will stop. So that's one technique when you're using an AI assistant you, you might find useful. So I saved the best in this tutorial to last probably, which is Q&A sessions. These can be incredibly useful. Here's an example. I want to create a CV and I've got it to use a dummy address, email address and phone number because I don't particularly want to go into those. But I want it to ask me questions until it has enough information to create my CV and then show it to me as a PDF. Now I haven't tried this before, so we'll see what happens. So I'm going to have to improvise as we go along. along. So it's asking me for my full name. Let's put Bob Smith, job title. So headline under the name. Let's say I'm applying to be a catering assistant. 
professional summary I haven't really done much I'm not gonna no problem we can still create a strong positive summary by focusing on transferable skills so but yes that sounds good work experience I worked in the, the local cafe for two weeks try not to over egg this so the name of the cafe is uh, let's call it transport caf uh, in Bolton which I chose completely at random uh, do you have any other work like volunteer experience no education to CSEs in art and music I'm not overqualified name of the school I've I forget Let's see and it says education that keeps it accurate without guessing and a skills section I'll say yes that list is okay so you can see that if this was a real example it would actually be a useful set of things it's asked me I can, uh, so do you want me to add a references line at the bottom no but not in French and what it's doing is analyzing this and it's going to create a PDF which will basically take this information it's put in here as a CV and summarize it so it's now ready to download if I click on that and there's my CV and considering how little information I gave it it's done a reasonably good job it's even invented some of the tasks I did to try to make me sound more attractive so that's one example of how you can use a question and answer session to get better answers. Here's another. So supposing, and this is becoming a familiar theme, I want to know what to cook for a dinner party. So I'm hosting a dinner party tonight and I need help deciding what to cook. But I'm going to get it to ask me a series of questions one at a time, waiting for my answer before I go on to the next question, until I have it has enough information to suggest a meal plan so basically, as soon as it's got enough information, it will stop asking me the questions and it will give me a suggested meal. And I find this technique really useful. So the first question, how many guests? Let's say it's four. Do any of the guests have dietary restrictions or strong dislikes? One veggie and one person doesn't, whoops, doesn't like fish. Do you want the meal to feel more casual? I think, no, let's go for elegant. Do you prefer cuisine style? Uh, let's go for Asian. Would you like the dessert to be light and refreshing? Let's go for rich and indulgent. And then it comes up with an excellent meal plan. Now I hope you can see that if this was a realistic example and you put some thought into answering the questions, it's a really good way of putting the onus on the AI tool to interrogate you with sensible questions and when it's got enough information to come up with a really good answer. So this is a, a really useful technique. There's so much more on our website at wiseowl.co.uk, including blogs, shorter tips, tutorials on SQL and VBA, hundreds of exercises in all sorts of different software applications, and a chance to test your skills in a few selected software applications. In addition to all of that, you can watch our video tutorials like this one in all these different subjects. Or you could consider booking one of our training courses, whether it be classroom, on site or online, or even as one-to-one -one consultancy. Thank you for watching.